Tracking emissions over time. An overview. Generally, when companies begin measuring their greenhouse gas emissions, they do so with the intent of managing and reducing these emissions. In order to track their progress over time, companies must choose a base year, a reference year against which future emissions will be compared. Establishing a base year enables companies to track their performance over time. It is important to select a base year for which accurate, verifiable data is available. If collecting historical data is difficult, the data should not be used to establish the base year. Companies should choose as their base year the earliest relevant point in time for which they have reliable data. Single year versus multi year averages. When a company sets its base year, it can choose a single year or an average of annual emissions over several consecutive years. A multi year average is sometimes used to smooth out unusual fluctuations in emissions. For example, The United Kingdom's emissions trading scheme specified an average of emissions from 1998 to 2000 as the reference point for tracking emissions. Recalculating base year emissions. Since the base year is used for tracking and comparing emissions over time, it is important to make sure that these comparisons are meaningful and consistent. In other words, we need to make sure we are comparing like with like. Greenhouse gas inventories have a number of variables which can change over time, making comparisons to the base year inaccurate and sometimes even deceiving. For example, companies often undergo significant structural changes such as mergers, acquisitions, and divestments. These changes can significantly increase or decrease a company's emissions, making it difficult to compare current emissions with those in the base year. For example, imagine a large power company has 15 power plants and decides to acquire a smaller company that has five power plants. Assuming that all the power plants are similar in size and type, this would increase the company's emissions by more than 30% overnight. In this scenario, the company's emissions relative to its emissions in the base year would be far greater. But this is a difficult comparison to make because the actual emissions to the atmosphere may not have changed at all. The acquired power plants may have already existed in the base year, so the only thing that would change it is the ownership of the power plants. Similarly, if the large power company sells five of its 15 power plants to the smaller company, its emissions would appear to have decreased by more than 30%. In either of these situations, it is difficult to make meaningful comparisons to the emissions in the base year. In order to maintain consistency over time and to make sure that comparisons are comparing like with like, historic emissions data must be recalculated when these types of changes take place. The base year recalculation policy. In order to address this issue, Companies should develop a policy for recalculating base year emissions and clearly articulate the basis and context for any recalculations. Many companies choose to apply a significance threshold to their base year recalculation policy. The significance threshold is a qualitative and or quantitative criterion that defines the level of significance required to trigger the recalculation of base year emissions. For example, a company might specify a significance threshold of 5%, meaning that changes are only considered significant if they represent more than 5% of the company's total annual emissions. The greenhouse gas protocol and the ISO standards. Do not make recommendations as to what constitutes significant. But some GHG programs do specify numerical significance thresholds. For example, 
The California Climate Action Registry specifies a threshold of 10% of the base year emissions. It is the responsibility of the company to determine the significance threshold that triggers the recalculation of base year emissions. Events that can trigger recalculation. According to the greenhouse gas protocol, the following cases should trigger a recalculation. They are structural changes such as mergers, acquisitions and divestments, or the outsourcing and insourcing of greenhouse gas emitting activities, changes in calculation methodologies, or improvements in the accuracy of emissions factors or activity data. And the discovery of significant errors, or a number of errors that are cumulatively significant. Let's talk about structural changes. Structural changes necessitate the recalculation of historical emissions because they don't actually change the amount of greenhouse gases emitted into the atmosphere. They just transfer emissions from one company to another. But in order to make meaningful comparisons between the base year and future years, the inventory boundary must be held consistent. Since this is not always the case, base year emissions must be recalculated when structural changes that affect the inventory boundary take place. In the previous example, the acquisition of the smaller power company by the larger one changed the company's inventory boundary which merely transferred the emissions from one company to another. In this situation, the acquiring company should recalculate its base emissions to reflect what its emissions would have been in the base year if the five power plants had been included in its inventory. Base year emissions recalculation for structural changes. This illustration shows the procedure for recalculating base year emissions for an acquisition. In this example, Company Gamma consists of two business units, A and B. In its base year, which in this case is year 1, each business unit emits 25 tons of CO2 for a total of 50 tons. In year 2, the company experiences organic growth, leading to an increase in emissions to 30 tons per business unit for a total of 60 tons. Base year emissions are not recalculated in this case because organic growth does not trigger recalculation. At the beginning of year 3, the company acquires production facility C from another company. The annual emissions of facility C in year 1 were 15 tons and 20 tons in years 2 and 3. In year 3, Company Gamma's total emissions, including Facility C, were 80 tons. In order to maintain consistency over time, the company recalculates its base year emissions to take into account the acquisition of Facility C. In this example, the base year emissions increased by 15 tons, the quantity of emissions produced by Facility C in Gamma's base year. As a result, the recalculated base year emissions are 65 tons. Recalculating greenhouse gas emissions for all years between the base year and the reporting year is not necessary. However, if Gamma chose to do so, it would report 80 tons as the recalculated emissions for year 2. The next example is very similar to the previous one, but there is one major difference. The acquired facility came into existence after the base year was set. In this example, Company Beta consists of two business units, A and B, with the same emissions as in the previous example. Once again, the base year was set in year 1. In the beginning of year 3, Beta acquired production facility C from another company. Production facility C who came into existence in year 2, with emissions of 15 tons in year 2 and 20 tons in year 3. The total emissions of company Beta in year 3 are therefore 80 tons, as in the previous example. But in the case of this acquisition, 
the base year emissions of company Beta do not change because the acquired facility C did not exist in year 1 when company Beta set its base year. The base year emissions of Beta therefore remain at 50 tons and a company may choose to recalculate its emissions for year 2 as 75 tons. Before we move on, we're going to look at one more example. This time, we will look at a divestment rather than an acquisition. As you might guess, the procedures for recalculating base year emissions for a divestment are essentially opposite of those for an acquisition. In this example, Company Delta consists of three business units, A, B, and C. In year one, each business unit emits 25 tons, making the total emissions 75 tons in the company's base year. In year two, the company experiences some growth, leading to an increase in emissions to 30 tons per business unit for a total of 90 tons. Once again, there is no recalculation for growth, so base year emissions are not recalculated in this instance. At the beginning of year three, Delta divests business unit C and its annual emissions are now 60 tons. This makes it look as if Delta decreased its emissions by 15 tons relative to the base year emissions. However, to maintain consistency over time, the company recalculates its base year emissions to take into account the divestment of business unit C. As a result, the base year emissions lowered by 25 tons, the quantity of emissions produced by business unit C in the base year. The recalculated base year emissions are now 50 tons, and Delta's emissions have risen by 10 tons relative to the base year, as opposed to the 15 ton decrease that resulted from the divestment. Outsourcing and insourcing. We have now looked at the recalculation of base year emissions for acquisitions and divestments. Another common structural change is the outsourcing and insourcing of greenhouse gas emitting activities. Outsourcing and insourcing basically has the same effect on a company's emissions as acquiring and divesting business units. The only difference here is that a company that outsources or insources an operation doesn't necessarily buy or sell that operation. A typical example is a small vertically integrated manufacturing company. If the company decides to outsource the manufacturing to another company overseas, it would appear as if its emissions decreased substantially, when in reality, the emissions were simply shifted to a company overseas. In order to maintain consistency, the company would recalculate its base year emissions to take into account the outsourcing of the manufacturing.